I think one of the worst things we can do is to try to put God in a box. By that I mean sticking a label on God and saying, this is who God is. And yet, depending on my needs at the moment, I find it necessary to do just that at different times in my life. Sometimes I need a mothering, maternal God. A God who wraps me in her arms and says, Shh, to my soul. Shh, everything's going to be all right. And so I imagine God to be feminine in nature. Sometimes I need a paternal, father-like God who is a take-charge sort of deity, one who protects me from my enemies and who provides for my daily needs. And that's when I imagine God's nature to be masculine. Sometimes I pray to a long-suffering, loving, compassionate God who forgives my flaws, regardless of how many times I have fallen short in an area of life. This God says to me, it's all right, child. Let go of it. I have. Now let's start over. And at other times I pray to an unyielding God, a God who always says no to oppression and abuse and murder, a God who says not now and not ever. The God I worship defies any single label I might try to use. And so if I try to describe God, it will be with many different images and metaphors, sometimes seemingly contradictory. John's Gospel reports Jesus using different images to describe himself too. In one instance he said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. In another, he describes his relationship to the disciples by comparing himself to a vine. When he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. In this morning's illustration, he calls himself a gate or a door. And so let's explore for a few minutes what he might have meant by that image. At first glance, a gate or door might not seem like a very appealing image because gates keep people out and doors are sometimes slammed in our faces in either a literal or a metaphorical sense. You may have tried to board a plane and been stopped at the gate because you were about to go through with an object on your person that made you suspect of being a terrorist. Not such a good feeling, is it, to be stopped at the gate in front of everyone. If you are a woman in the workforce, chances are good that you may have had doors of opportunity slammed in your face as you have tried to advance yourself. If you are a gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender, you may have been refused access to full communion in a church and so you also know what it's like to have a door slammed in your face. But if we think about it, it's not really the gate or door that's the problem, but instead the gatekeeper and doorkeeper. Gates exist for our good. In this morning's text, a gate is a point of entry A sheep enters the gate in order to be with the rest of the flock. Not just any old flock, but the flock to which it belongs, the flock which has provided for it a sense of identity. Jesus says he is that point of entry. He is our common denominator. Our flock may look like a motley crew of lame sheep and able-bodied sheep. It may consist of young lambs and sheep which are well past our prime. It may consist of sheep covered in snow white wool and sheep with black fleece. But we all enter through the same gate and no one can turn us away. We are all members of the same flock, loved and cared for by the God, by the Good Shepherd. Jesus is our, our point of entry into that community. The gate also offers protection to the flock from those who would cause harm. 
the ancient Christian community to whom the Gospel of John was written was concerned with maintaining what it considered to be the true and right Christian faith. It was always on the lookout for heretical sects of Christianity seeking to lure believers into their arena. In this morning's reading, they are called sheep rustlers. Today, unless you are a member of one of the fundamentalist brands of Christianity, that's not such a big fear. But people still need to feel safe. Safe from judgment and gossip and condemnation safe enough to be authentic in worship. In Jesus, we can lay aside our fears and rest assured that we are welcome at his banquet table of love. And lastly, the gate is the means by which the sheep exit into the green pasture where it finds food and sustenance. Through Jesus, we are fed. Our spirits are nourished and our souls are provided for. And so throughout this illustration, Jesus is the gate and you and I are the sheep. But that's not necessarily the way it always is, nor is it the way that it should be. Sometimes I think we need to see ourselves as the gate too. You and I and the church are the gate. Just as Jesus said, I am the light of the world earlier in John's Gospel, and the statement is turned around in the Sermon on the Mount when he is recorded as saying, You are the light of the world, let your light shine before others, I think we also might want to consider the possibility of turning his gate statement around with each of us being gates in the same way that Jesus was. Jesus isn't some deity on a pedestal who I worship from a distance. If I want to call myself a Christian, or in the words of the first century disciples, a follower of the way, then I've got to make the effort to imitate Christ, to do what he did and to be what he was. And if that is the case, then you and I and the church are called to be gates in the same ways that Jesus was a gate. But the problem arises when we confuse our roles and see ourselves as gatekeepers instead of gates. If we see ourselves as gatekeepers, we want to have our say about who is allowed in and who isn't. Who fits into this flock and who doesn't. Who belongs and who needs to move on down the road and find another fold. Jesus was the point of entry into the community of faith. Are we? Does the newcomer feel a sense of belonging as much as the old timer? Does the young person feel heard and represented when she or he offers suggestions or are those suggestions quietly ignored? Does the person with a limited income have as much access to participation in church social events as the rest of the congregation? Our church's first core value says everyone is welcome at Central Texas MCC. Each of us provides a sense of belonging to people and we cherish their presence in our family. If this is true, then as gates we are always open to new people, new ideas, and new ways of doing things. If we are gates, we provide an entry point into a welcoming community. Our second core value says we value a spirit of safe haven. We promote a spirit within our daily lives as well as within worship where everyone can be authentic without fear of rejection or condemnation. Just as Jesus was that gate of protection for his community, we also need to provide a sense of protection for ours. No one should be criticized for their views and opinions or made feel less than. And everyone should feel comfortable in their own skin. And finally, you and I need to be the means by which the spirits of others are nurtured and nourished. We are nourished by God's presence and we experience that presence through prayer and community and meditation and reflection on sacred scripture. 
And that calls to mind our third core value. We value the Bible. The Bible, always open to interpretation and exploration, provides the basis for our understanding of God and God's relationship with us. In this morning's text, Jesus described himself as the gate. But you and I are also gates. We are called by God to be the means by which people experience inclusion, a sense of safety, and spiritual nourishment. With Jesus as our example and the Holy Spirit as our guide, we will accomplish the goal which has been set before us. If we are the church to which God has called us, then we are also the gate which Jesus has modeled. May God make it so. Amen.